My name is Jerry Strawan and I am currently studying my first year of university studying business management and marketing. In this presentation I will be talking about the marketing of Red Bull, GmbH and the other topics surrounding areas which will relate to my chosen organisation. First of all I want to talk about what is marketing. There are a number of different definitions for marketing but the one definition I want to focus on is the management process of anticipating, identifying and satisfying customer requirements profitably. What this definition is saying is basically it's not all about the advertising and selling. There's a bigger picture to connect with consumers. It's key for the pro producers of the goods and services to match the consumers' desires and without proper marketing you won't be able to get close to the customers and satisfy their needs. So linking back to this definition when it comes down to it, it's to do with the management process at the top whether your marketing strategy is successful. This brings me on to market orientation. What is, this, what is market orientation? Well, market orientation focuses on the customer's wants and needs. Some companies such as British Airways, Toys R Us and Argos all look to solve a customer need of an idea, product or service. A market orientated firm looks to create customer value. This is the relationship between benefits and the sacrifice needed to obtain those benefits. This is basically saying that the customer value means that a good a consumer must be getting a product of quality that they expect of a price that they're happy paying. Now I'm going to talk about the components of two marketing environments, macro and micro, and link this to my chosen company, Red Bull. The micro environment in marketing is the external and controllable factors. The macro environment in marketing are factors close to a business that have direct impact on its business operation and success. So the macro environment, the macro environment focuses on the external factors that, of, that an organisation can't directly control. So the businesses need to change themselves in a way so that benefits them. The pest analysis is a common way to identify the external factors that are affecting an organisation. There's four main elements of the pest analysis. The main two I'm going to, I'm going to be explaining is political, political and economical. Political factors can be an advantage for a company such as there may be a new law to say that there are no trade restrictions but also it can be a disadvantage because they may bring a new law to raise minimum wages therefore you have to pay your workers more. The second element is economical factors. All businesses are affected by national and global economic factors. For example, if a company has high unemployment and not much spending power, they are likely to be in recession. Therefore, they don't have the money to buy goods and services. So to conclude, an organisation needs to make sure it prepares itself and employs strategies to protect themselves from these difficult situations that they may, ar may arise. The, the microenvironment. For any businesses, for any business, the microenvironment is a semi is semi controllable. <coughs> the stakeholders involved in the microenvironment include things like customers. As all businesses need customers, they should be centered around them. So it's important for a for a business to focus its aims to attract customers and keep them coming back by meeting their needs and wants. Another stakeholder involvement is this is the media. Obviously, a business wants to be wants positive media attention, so it's important for them to manage the media so that. They only promote positive things. Also, the employees are a major stakeholder, as these as these are people representing the company. It's important to employ staff that have the correct skills and experience. Also, keeping them motivated and trained is key, so they're always being a good representation representation of the company. So, <clears throat> this is how I'm going to link it to Red Bull. How does all this link to Red Bull? Red Bull, in my opinion, is one of the most highly successful brands in the in a marketing point of view. They have created an iconic blue and silver can that is globally recognised. The famous tagline, Red Bull gives you wings, is implying that this will give you the consumer a better performance, but also gives the consumer an image that will take them on an adventure. The marketing strategy that has worked best for us is not to publish our strategies, said by a Red Bull representative. But what info I've gathered in the marketing we can physically see around us is that have got continuous marketing connections. They're all about making sure the market knows uh, the market knows they are always got to be present in this industry. <coughs> they're always about they're always about with the Mini Coopers, the promo girls, and going into venues and handing out free Red Bull. Their basic their marketing strategy is basically to employ young people in universities, in colleges, etc., to create networks by getting as much Red Bull as they can out there. They obviously 
uh, creating a brand awareness and this has a positive impact on the brand. <coughs> this links back to the micro environment as Red Bull is meeting the customer's needs and wants because they're offering free Red Bull, which they hope customers will buy in the shops eventually. They're also putting on sport related events and this creates positive media attention. This is the end of my presentation on the market of Red Bull. Thank you for watching.